Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish, here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. In this weekly show, I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday D&D game. In this case, I am running the hardcover D&D adventure, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. This show, like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. If you want to help me do more shows like this, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish and signing up. Patrons get access to all kinds of exclusive content, previews of videos, previews of other material, but most of all, they help support shows like this. To the patrons of Sly Flourish, thank you very much for your support. Oh boy, I got I got woes and troubles today. So I gotta, I gotta go real quickly through like a summary because we got a lot of work to do today. Basically, the characters are now on the shores of the island of Grimskull. And I don't know what the hell is there. I got nothing. It's a big blank slate. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do there. So we're going to talk about that. But let's take a quick look at what has happened. So they were in the Dark Duchess, right? They went into the Dark Duchess. They had killed a troll. Uh, Kobold sprung a big trap on them, did a bunch of damage. They had to fight a bunch of icy rat swarms. They had to deal with the kobolds. And while they're fighting the kobolds, they learned that Ar Arvinaturus, the dragon, is coming here. And Arvinaturus landed on the ship and it's looking around. Giant head comes in the hole. It's like, who's here? And they pretended to be kobolds because Arvinaturus can't see. And they managed to convince Arvinaturus that somebody else had stolen something or that somebody ran away because a kobold ran off and they're like, oh yeah, they did it. And he's like, where's the bell? And they, they, they figured out that there was a bell there and they, I, they managed to nooker Avrantoris into believing that they were kobolds too. He said, because the, the troll smell was so big that it, it masked their own smells and they did that. And so, and then after that, they headed towards Bell. They, they did not go back to 10 towns, which is going to be an important point. They got the bell. They dragged it uh, over to Juke's Bell, in the, which is in the adventure. They fought some giant vultures. They found a dead frost druid. They hung up the bell. They rang the bell. Angajuk showed up. They rode on Angajuk's back. I could have done more stuff with there's like whalers there's a potential encounter with like whalers that are hunting angajuk i could have done some stuff with that there were some interesting things they could have seen on the way that i missed out on that i, I would have liked to have described in the narration of their journey with angajuk but i was like ah, let's just get them straight to, to grimskull and then they arrived on the shores of grimskull and that's where we ended that's where we ended the adventure so secret wise i checked off a couple secrets that they learned Ar arventaurus once served as partner to melthrond melthrond is long since dead they, they learned that, like, is that guy dead on his back? They learned these things. They learned, they didn't learn a lot of this stuff. Uh, they did learn that Avrantoris does not fly over the sea of moving ice. She fears Oral and knows that Oral rides in a powerful mount of her own. They did learn that. The Frost Giants of old worshipped Oral from a citadel known as Grimstall. They did learn that. Ravison awoke Angajuk. Uh, they did learn that. Frost Druids often traveled to uh, Grimskull in honor of Oral and the Codice of the White. They did learn that. Huge Bird has been seen flying over the south. They did learn that. Pages of the Code of Silver White have been maintained for thousands of years. I don't know if they learned that or not. I don't, I don't think they did. So now uh, they did get the gray bag of tricks. I had a little bit of like player drama over who got the bag of tricks uh, that I didn't handle particularly well. So always best to kind of stop when a magic item shows up before somebody grabs it up and saying, okay, let's take a look at what people have, who got items last, whose turn is it? But I think it worked out. I think it's okay. I did give out the jewel mask that casts greater invisibility once. I did not give out the gem of seeing, did not give out the slippers of spider climbing. And I guess now they're on the island. I, I haven't had the Knight's Kiss show up yet. And they're not about to show up on this island. So I think Knight's Kiss are coming later. I keep kicking back Knight's Kiss. So let's go back and let's create a new session planning template. And we have, it is 5 September 2021, Sunday, Frost Maiden. All right. Let's start by, I only have four characters today. So let's go to our, gallery view so characters that i have today are ilda uh ilda is a half elf half goliath whose family are members of various cults and she may have blood of either thrun or oral or nobody flowing through her veins she is the sister of uh that sister of Aachen and now considered one of the family of the dawn callers the dawn caller family and the white white doom the worm doom crag Goliaths, which makes her very happy. Her play, the player hasn't been here for the last couple of sessions, so she's going to suddenly show up on the Isles of Grim Skull. Uh, I don't know. Is there any angles between her and the island that might be there? It, there could be some kind of fun 
iconography of her that was done like a thousand years ago, right? So yeah, her, her parents are junk merchants who sold her for drinking. Or the emperor. Shadowhawk is a drow, half drow, half mind flayer, member, former member of House Zalaren on the run who has a symbiote in his head. I don't know if the symbiote has a name. It really ought to have a name. He's got bracers of defense. I think he probably needs more. I need to talk about what magic items he's got because he's probably due for something. I, I need I need him to get something cool. Auchendon Collar, member of the Worm Doom Crag Goliaths, has seen a structure under the ice. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything special there. Gorwan Alcazar, I think, is one of the players who's going to be out. No, I don't know. It's, I hope he's not out today because I know Perrin is out. I don't know. We might only have three players today. Gorwan Alcazar, member of the Wan Alcazar family, and who's actually a secret member of the Grey Castle family. And he is good on magic items, that's for sure. He's got a Lux Stone, he's got a Cloak of Protection. Does he have a Necklace of Protection? Oh, these are items he wanted. I was like, oh my God. But he has a bunch of items. And we have Perrin Fat Rabbit. Perrin, I don't think is going to be here today. Uh, Perrin is the Halfling Ranger Conspiracy Nut. Yeah, don't want the fight against Oral with three players. I don't think Oral is going to fight the characters. Doesn't mean she won't show up. And then we have Candle. Uh, Candle is a tabaxi rogue, former agent of the Xanathar, who escaped from the Xanathar and now resides and has murdered, didn't murder, killed the assassin who was hunting him and has a couple, you know, a couple of different magic items. So those are the characters. So the strong start today is the, the Frost Giant docks, right? They're at the docks of the Frost Giant. There are huge stairs... There are massive Remoraz skulls. What else is there? Any other kind of cool, maybe like a, a swamped warship? Might be kind of cool, like a giant, not, not like a big warship, but like a, could be things there. So what could happen? What, what interesting event could happen? Could somebody come and say hello? Would they, would they be introduced? There is in the book a... Is it a method? Let's take a look at the DD Beyond. There is an, yeah, an ice method, a SOPO. Okay, people already know about this ice method. Thank you. I'm so glad I have people who have run this adventure that are hanging out in the chat. Where are we? Oral's abode. An ice method named SOPO perched at the top of the stairs. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so hey, look, the book actually has something. That's nice. The ruined dock. Frost Giants ruined this dock. Blah, blah, blah. Frost Giants steps 50 foot high. Ice man that Sopo the ice method. So I think we want Sopo to be a new friend. And maybe Sopo is the new Sopo. New page in. The new thumper. Let's get a picture of an ice method. Oh, I love this one with the hat. Look, this one has a little hat. Do we like the method that has a hat? It's pretty great. I think the fact that it has a tiny fur hat means they won't kill it right away. So I think we're going to give Sopo a little tiny hat. Sopo is an NPC and we have an image of Sopo. So if we think about, so I, I think in the book, Sopo is really trying to like screw people over. I don't think we want to do that. I don't want Sopo to just constantly be sending them into, you know, we don't, we don't want them to kill Sopo. So who would, who would Sopo be? Oh, how about Farnham from Deadwood, right? kind of wormy and you know like more important think think they're more important than they actually are i think farnham from deadwood is a good is sopo a herald for oral i don't think so i think sopo works for sopo and sopo can be definitely a big driver of secrets and clues so i might want to throw something harder like is, is like could sopo help them with something right off the bat is there you know, could they be attacked by something? I always do the attacks. What what kind of challenge could they face at the... I mean, they could face a frost giant skeleton, but that's awfully... That's, that's an awful lot. Oh, invisible stalkers are the worst. I like them, but boy, they're hard. Remoraz at the docks? Like, what would attack you at, at frosty docks? What, what, what would... You know, is there a predator, an, an orca, right? Snow spiders, a la Mando. Snow spiders are interesting. A dire shark. Is there a dire shark? Do we have stats for a dire shark? Do we have a giant shark? We have a giant shark. How's that thing? That's, that's, that's pretty good. 
22 points of damage. And maybe Sopo can help him. We'll call it a dire, dire shark attack. And then Sopo might help him out some, somehow. We'll find a way for Sopo to help him out. Sopo comes to help. So if I'm going to break the scenes down, it's Docs exploring Grimskull Island and then arriving at Grimskull. Well, that seems easy, right? Except, boy, what is happening on Grimskull Island? I don't even know. Like, I know that there's a lot of places on there, but really I need to I need to fill this place out. I, I want to build a small point crawl, maybe not even a small point crawl, but some kind of point crawl that goes from the docks to Grimskull and then different ways that they can go and different choices they can make and different things they could face. Secrets and clues. Grimskull was built thousands of years ago by frost giants who worshipped oral. The codicil of the white is a collection of ancient magic collected by the druids of oral for centuries. Oral used the codicil to channel the energy of Thrun to create the endless night. The spell must be countered to end the endless night, but the source of its power must also be severed. They need to do both things. They need to both use the codicil of the white to end the spell, and they have to cut off the source of power to end the endless night. Both things need to occur. A manifestation of oral walks on Grimskull. Oral herself fashioned a garden of icy sculptures. Oral travels to on the back of a giant rock called, what is the rock's name? Uh, Iskra. So let's make uh, called Iskra and we are gonna make another NPC called Iskra. Uh, new sub page in Frostmaiden database. So I've got a page for Iskra. Iskra, make an NPC, make a villain. I'll find a picture later. It's not, not too important right now. Seven, seven secrets. What other secrets can they have? Deep icy tunnels across the aisle. Layers of ancient dead lie within. The druids, the froster is loyal to oral come to Grimskull to pay homage and be tested. They have frost giant crypts. What else? Any other interesting secrets that we wanna drop in here? I, I guess we'll, we'll keep one secret open. The secrets are not the hard part in today's show. The hard part are the locations. I need to set up a bunch of locations. So let's start off by looking at what is in the book and saying, what are the cool locations that exist in the book itself? So they've kind of spread everything out. And the idea of like, you know, you'd land at one of the docks here, right? Well, like, look at, like all this stuff is sort of spread all over the place. And they just might follow that road and go right up to Grimskull. They know what they're going to do. So instead, I'd like to kind of figure out what we could do along the way. I don't, I don't think this... Maybe I'm being picky, but I don't think this map is particularly useful because I don't think there's any reason to go to any of these other locations, right? Not really. And you know, you're kind of, I mean, I guess it's like the sandboxy nature. Like, why wouldn't you explore the island and see everything it's got? But again, like, world is dying and you're very likely to get your arms ripped off by a Yeti. So why would I explore? So instead, I want to offer paths that they can take that are all kind of leading them to Grimskull, right? So how about if Iskra guard often guards the, the 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 road or the path to the gates of Grimskull. So now there's like, well, why don't you just want to follow the icy path and get right there? Because yeah, you might get attacked by a giant bird. So let's take a look at the locations it has, and then we're probably going to come up with a few more of our own. So we have the ruined dock. We know about that, right? So let's, let's drop that in there. You know, I'm not going to bother with all the attributes of that because that one's in the book. Time is precious shipwrecks. So I think that they offer the, you know, at the docks, they might look to their left and right and see that there are shipwrecks on both sides. Right. And 
you know, so which ones do we want to have for those for those shipwrecks? You know, would be cool. So we have. Let's come up with a cool name. Let's see if the my Sly Flourish names can work. The Dirt Maker. That's not really cool. The Gravel Maker. The Titan Howler. That'll be one shipwreck they can see off one side. The Shadow Storm. How about Shadow's Storm? So those are two ships that have gone off the other side. I would love, if anybody has an idea about how to show like a point crawl in Notion, boy, I'd love to be able to do that. Like how do you show an, a graph in, what's the best way to show like a graph in Notion? And the only way I can think of is like these indent, these indents. We'll, we'll, we'll start with that. And we'll see how these go, right? And I think that the shipwrecks lead to icy caves, right? And the icy caves lead to, my, my hierarchy is gonna get out of control really soon, so I don't think we're gonna do the indenting. We'll, we'll just list them out and then maybe I can draw things. So we have icy caves. Uh, the icy caves lead to the tombs of the frost giant. And uh, what, frost giant what? Are they guardians? The frost giant legionnaires? I smell a graph is. Yeah, I could pull out graph is and I could do with that, but it's a little you know hard. Let's see how we're doing on time and figure that out. Tombs of the Frost Giant Legionnaires, I think would be a neat place. Oh, so I've, I've already, I'm, I'm running off with my own ideas without looking at theirs. So we have Shipwrecks, right? Um, Nass Lamentar's Ghost. So I'm skipping this whole thing because they already have a ghost. They already have a thing that's like the Professor Orb. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna skip this whole bit because I don't think it's critical Look, they've got secrets and stuff, but all of this stuff I think I've already got because I have the ghost of a Janth, Janth Alwar's ghost, which I'll throw in the NPCs, right? Janth Al Alwar. Is, I'm, I'm replacing the ghost with Janth Alwar. So that means I don't really need this or the, the, or the weasel familiar. Is there any treasure here that's a particular? So that means I'm skipping all that. The ice statues. I think the, the garden of the ice sculptures is a great... That's a that's a really cool location. So I, I definitely want that. The Yeti Caves, right? Probably a place you don't want to go. The Garden of Death. That's that's a great name. Areas of everywhere that died. Oral displays creatures that have died on the island. Each creature is encased in thick ice, pre preserving its remains. Pirates, hunters, adventurers, worshippers, and others who fell prey to cold embrace are frozen in forms of hares, foxes, and other small animals. That's grim. An ice troll found its way here and destroyed. We already had an ice troll. I think we want to probably do something else. So you have the Gardens of Death. How is that different than the ice statues? I guess it's two different places. Okay. And that's it. So that those are all the locations that they have on the island. Whoops. I would like more, right? So that's how many? Two, three, four, five, six. That's six. I'd like at least four more cool locations. I've got the Tombs of the Frost Giant Legionnaires. I think that's cool. I think a druid, a circle of the frost druids would be a cool place. Like, you know, Stonehenge made out of ice that would be pretty cool. What else? The dragon's bones. I mean, bones of an ancient white dragon that died here long ago would be a cool thing to see. I can't go wrong with giant bones. I need a dragon name. Caranthurus. Bones of Caranthurus, the ancient white. That works. A lot of U's and stuff. What other... What other cool locations? You know, let's take a look at, let's take a look at the adventure generators. Because I think I have a Encounters of the Frozen North, page 10, that I wrote up. Why don't I have my own thing? So I have backdrops. Let's roll some backdrops. This, by the way, available to patrons of Sly Flourish. You can get this right away. I, I also, interestingly enough, I don't think this is going to be included in the Lazy DMs Companion. So the only way you might be able to get this chart is by joining the Patreon. So 14 backdrop would be a collapsed mine entrance. There's probably no mining that occurs here. So prob probably not. Let's roll again. 11, snow covered ravine. Okay, and let's put a monument in it. Ravine is cool. With a dark effigy. Yeah, you could have like the cleft. Let's see, the, the cleft, which has a effigy of the frost, maybe an effigy of Thrun. The cleft of the one below, right? This is sort of where they recognize the fact that Thrun's power is what's fueling this area. That could be kind of cool. 
Let's do another backdrop in Monument. 14 and 8. 14. I keep getting a mine entrance. I don't want the mine entrance. 11. I already got that one. 19. Hot Spring Geyser with a Glyph Totem. So what if there is a Glyph Totem that actually creates a set of hot springs? You know, would she, would Oral want that? She likes frost. But I think there might be some reason that she has this one place where there's boiling geysers, right? Amidst the snow caused by a, a central pillar. So that's pretty cool. So now I got like a number of locations. And of course there's Grimskull, right? So what is the layout of this? I guess we're going to go to Graph Viz. And we are going to create a, okay. So we have docks and we have the ships, right? And the Titan Howler. And we have, what is it? Shadows, Shadows something, uh, Shadows Storm. I guess it doesn't like apostrophes. Why? Oh, quotes. Quotes are your friend. There. All right. Both of those. We're going to make our lives easier. Go to the icy caves, right? Which go to the frost giant tombs. The tombs probably go to Grimskull, right? You know, you could probably make your way right there. Is there, so is there a secret? So that covers, let's see, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make a checklist out of this. And that way I can check off the ones that I've connected. So that, that's checked. Whoops. That's checked, that's checked, that's checked, that's checked, that's checked. So now the icy caves, so here's an interesting thing. We can have the the icy caves lead to the Yeti caves and the Yeti caves lead to what? The bones of the bones of the ancient white and then the dragon bones can go to probably any of those other locations. Uh, the circle, the frost ruids, uh, the garden of the ice sculptures, the ruid circle. That could be like a hub, right? Dragon bones go to the garden, ice sculptures. And can either of those places go to Grimskull? You could also have the dragon bones go to the, the effigy of the one below. And all of these, oh, let's just try it. Could go here. So look at that. Look at that point crawl. Where are the hot springs? Uh, the hot springs might be off from the, the cleft of the one below, right? So now I've got like another little offshoot there so i have the garden of ice sculptures the eddie i think this kind of displays can i how do i save this first of all let's grab this and let's make sure to paste it in here all right so i've got that i actually don't need the tabs what i might do is actually create a new location whoops for grim skull do i have one already i do okay uh so i have grim skull i have the picture and now I can put in a code block and stick in the graph viz. But how do I save this thing? Store ping, sure. And then in here, let's take a look and see if I need to change that. I, you know, I kind of whipped that out real quick, but now I've got myself a, let's see, there's a diamond mine in Arctic Canada. Oh, look, it's a spell, sorry, you already made one. I didn't notice, maybe to get me started, thank you. Sure, whip that thing off. I didn't see the chat until I started doing it. Sorry. I think there's a way to do style dotted. Does that work? Yay, look at that. So you can have secret paths, right? And this gets into like what is what makes a good point crawl. And point crawls, you want a few different things. You want asymmetry. It should not be symmetric. You want you want asymmetry, you want loop back so that like, they can go back a certain way, right? They can see that they can return a certain direction. You want kind of secret paths that they can discover, you know, like maybe this dragon bone to effigy of the one below. Maybe that one is actually, yeah. So you have sort of a secret path. Oh, can I define a point crawl? So uh, yeah, um, what the hell is a point crawl? A point crawl is basically a way of doing overland travel or exploration in a style that's very similar to how you explore a dungeon. Instead of doing distances and hexes and things like that, worrying about like the, f the miles that you go, you build your overland exploration in a series of points, locations, and then the connectors that connect them together, right? The, the, the things that connect them together. 
And what you end up with is a way of kind of letting players describe how they navigate through here, but doing so with like places that are interesting on their own, right? So this way we sort of have paths. In fact, I'm missing one, which is there's also a way the Frost Giant docks also lead somewhere else. They probably lead to... Like if you if you didn't go to either of the docks, you would probably would you end up at the Druid Circle or the Garden of Sculptures? Probably the Garden of Sculptures, right? Like where? Uh, how do you let the players know that you 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 describe it? You say like you know here you can see that there are three paths, and and from their distance you can see about where they they go. So they they generally know one node out, right? Like where where they can go, or they have to kind of follow a path and see what. But I need a way, like if the, the the road that is going up from the frost giant, I guess let's let's look back at the material itself and see what it says. So if you were to follow the road, you go from I1 to I4, right? And I4 is what? If it's that dumb, the ice statue. So let's just do that, right? We'll we'll do what they did. And we'll say that if you take the frost giant docks, you could go straight from there to the garden of sculptures, right? Yeah, boy, that changed the whole map. Oh no, and I've got crossovers now. I think the Garden of Sculptures also can go to can go to the Druid Circle. All right? That makes sense. <laughs> That's an interesting map. So yeah, now we've got, you know, a lot of different a lot of different ways they go. Could the, do the Garden of Sculptures go to the Hot Springs? Probably not. Can the Hot Springs go to the Druid Circle? Do the Druids go to the Hot Springs? Or do you have to go to the Dragon Bones? All right? I think the paths from the Dragon Bones, do they take a spa in the Hot Springs? Probably. I love how it, the whole thing like shifts around when you do that. And there's crossovers, which is terrible. I think that makes more sense. Here you get into this big cluster where like everything's connected to everything else. Like there's four different ways to get to Grimskull. And the idea that the effigy, the one below, is hidden by a lot of different things, right? Like nobody really knows how to get there. If you're at the Dragon Bones... Is, are there clear paths from the dragon bones to the garden of sculptures or are all of these sort of hidden paths? They might all be sort of hidden paths, right? I think. So the garden, dragon bones to the druid circle. So let's see, I want to grab this and then delete this. That's hidden. And probably the dragon bones to the garden of sculptures, same thing. So th this is why you generally don't want to link three things together because you're going to end up changing it, right? So the dragon, all the paths from the dragon bones are sort of hidden paths, right? The dash lines are sort of hidden paths. Move the effigy point down and the hot springs up. Removes the crossover lines. Oh, well, that move the effigy point down and the hot springs up. Like this guy? You know what I mean? I don't think if I physically move it, it changes. Yeah, I think it. it's looking for the nearest path. I'd have to actually alter its... If it's clear, it's fine. Like it's so it's a big complicated point crawl. I don't care. I can I can navigate it. I can see it. I think that's pretty good, right? I think we're good. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna stick that into my thing there, and then we're gonna grab this ping and then delete this and stick this here. Then I got a nice point crawl map. I think that's cool. What about encounters? So at these different places, do we want to set up some, what are some encounters that could occur here, right? So we have yetis, abominable, a bomb, rock. How about ghouls, right? Big piles of frost ghouls, icy ghouls. What other things might, what about like a trent, right? Like a frost trent. That would be pretty cool. Other things, any animals that druids would have awakened? How about like a friendly awakened polar bear with a bloody mouth, right? Certainly frost druids with, uh, what are those things called? Uh, winter wolves. That'd be a good one. Any other dying frost druid would be a good one. Any other cool encounters that make sense here? Undead or ice ghoul pirates, right? Any other, what a Remoraz, a Remoraz on this island would probably completely destroy the island. So you probably don't want to put a Remoraz there. Let's take a look. I had a bunch of encounters here in my encounter section. So a Paranoid Dwarven Explorers with Pack Mules, Angry Mammoth, Fighting Over a Mate, Mage and Golem, nope. Assassin Hunting Party, nope. Gnolls, Paratons, Friendly Priest, Dire Wolf Led Wolf Pack, Bandits, Orcs, Friendly Goliath Traders. This is for the mainland, really. Owlbears? Probably Owlbears, right? Could certainly have owl bears. 
you know, like Dragon, Dwargar, Ettercaps, Ice Ghouls. Are there like frost spiders? My other group just fought spiders, but I can always do like. How about a frost druid, druid Ettercap? That'd be cool, huh? Oven of Hags. I don't, I don't know. Would we have Hags here? They would have Hags in one of the boats. A beer her Hag. They already faced one of those. I don't want to overdo the Hags. Ice Mephit Swarm. We'll do one more. We'll do a D12. An Oni. Ooh, what, could we have an Oni here? What would the Oni be like? And what does the Oni serve? And how, is the Oni trapped here? Like, is it a rival? Oni Prisoner of Oral. That might be kind of a cool, fun thing. I think those are good. So I'll kind of like, I guess, roll randomly for those encounters, right? When we see it. So I don't think... Because I had to do all of Grimskull, I didn't really fill out. I've got secrets. I've got locations. I don't really have NPCs. I just made my list of monsters, so that's good enough. Treasure. I want to put something in here that uh, Shadowhawk will like. Shadowhawk's do for an item. So let's uh, look at some treasure here. We'll just do like a 5 to 10. Alchemy jug. Elemental gem. No, I don't want to summon an elemental. Clockwork amulet is uncommon. Staff of striking. Is he due for a staff? What would be a cool staff that he could find? He'd love the staff. A spider staff. Oh, that'd be pretty good. Is this the one that's from, yeah, Lost Mine of Fandelver, right? Spider climb and web. D6 poison damage. Shadowhawk is a sorcerer. 10 charges, fuel the spells within a staff in hand. You can cast each of the following spells in a staff of class. Spider climb. And or web. That's not bad. He'd like it. Let's take a look at what else. What is a Gulthia staff? No, Curse of Strahd stuff. I want to limit. No, that's fine. A staff of striking, staff of flower, staff of power. Is it time for a staff of power? Is it too is that too powerful? Well, yeah, you don't want to throw the wall of force and holy cow, globe of vulnerability. It's a great staff though. Staff of frost, of course. Kona Cole, that's really powerful too, though, right? That's a ra very rare staff. Staff of the Magi, Staff of Withering, Staff of Defense. He would love that because he likes defense, but he already has a pretty high AC. Bird Calls, Fate, Woodlands, Swarming Insects, Staff of the Forgotten One. What is that? What's that from? Jeez, look at that thing. Tomb of Annihilation. That's an artifact. Nope. Adornment, Dunamancy, Thunder and Lightning, Healing, Python. Staff of the Python. Go make himself a giant constrictor snake. People like the stack, Staff of the Python. Cleric, Druid, or Warlock. See, a sorcerer can't use it. Charming, Fire, Black Staff. What is another good sorcerer? Two charges to cast shield. He'd use shield all the time, though. It's too bad he can't summon a giant spider with this. That would be pretty cool. I guess no reason you couldn't. Like, you can use five charges to summon a giant spider for an hour. Sorcerer shards. Let's take a look at that. Good thing. Um, oh, a far realm shard. Withering crystal steeped in the message as an action you can get touch on time object. When you use the meta magic option on a spell while holding a wearing, you can cause a slimy tentacle to rip through the fabric realize strike one creature within 30 feet. That is awesome. Yes, we're gonna do that. It makes a charisma saving through a season becomes frightened of you until the start of your next turn. That one is awesome. We're gonna we're gonna do that. Oh man, thank you. Far Realm Shard. And that's because he's got Mind Flayer stuff. And it's just for the sorcerer, so we don't have to worry about another player taking it. Cool. Let's see. Grim Scott. All right. I think we are all set. Do I feel confident about today's game? Not really. Not super confident. But I got a lot of material, and I think I'm going to be improvising. So I think we'll be okay. I think we'll I think we'll figure this out. I'm going to turn these into bullets, and I'm going to move them to the Grimskull page. I got locations. I got encounters. I'm sticking all that in a Grimskull, because I'm going to use that for my other group, right? I did all this work. I'm going to use it for two different groups, because I'm lazy. I also don't need that this thing here. I can delete that. So my notes are nice and streamlined because <laughs> I threw it on the Grimskull page. Notion, man. Notion's the best. So I'm all set. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this show, you can help me out in four different ways. One, you can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. 
Two, you can subscribe to my videos on YouTube. Three, you can support me directly by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and becoming a Sly Flourish patron. Or four, you can pick up any of my books, including Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master or the Lazy DM's Workbook. Uh, later this month, I am running a Kickstarter for the new Lazy DM book called The Lazy DM's Companion, some of which the material I used in the thing today. So have a great week and I will see you guys next week. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Take care.